Thank you very much. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you about NFTs today, the revolution, what's going on. And the keywords here are traceability and digital property. So let me introduce myself very quickly. Uh, I'm an artist, so I've been painting for almost 20 years now. Uh, traditional art that I sell in art galleries in the world. And I have discovered the world of NFTs almost two years ago. Two years is like an eternity in this field. And um, I've read about it a lot. And I've started to buy my first NFT. That was, uh, so that was beginning of 2021. And it was bought on a marketplace, a website called Nifty Gateway. And Nifty Gateway at that, at that time was the only website where you could buy an image as an NFT with a credit card. So that's what I did. I browsed in the, all along the website and I found an image that I liked and I have bought it for $500. And at the time I thought it was big money to buy a JPEG because before I used to do screenshots like maybe you do today. And I said, if I like an image, I just save it on my computer. And then Nifty Gateway told me that I was the owner, the only owner of that image. And they told us that it was on the blockchain. And I said, wow, this is amazing. I want to know more about that. And I thought the best way to know more about that was to sell my own art as NFTs. So I took my computer, I took my Photoshop software that I really uh, um, used to, and I did some digital art. Uh, both uh, still art like that, images, and I've did done also some uh, moving images like videos. And I've sold them on a website which is called Marketplace actually. It's called Rarible. And I've sold them uh, for big, big uh, cryptocurrency, big money as we say. And I've sold them, I've sold a lot of artworks and I became, in February I became top seller of NFTs. So I said, all right, what's going on with me? What's going on? So. I've earned some ETH, ETH, which is Ether, which is the cryptocurrency of a blockchain called Ethereum. By the way, on Rarible, most of my buyers were artists also. So between artists, we buy art. And this, is what, this was actually the first e market of NFTs. So I thought about, I've read about Ethereum, which is, as you know, a blockchain. Very different from the very first blockchain, which is Bitcoin, right? Which is the first blockchain. Ethereum is a blockchain for applications, basically for software, uh, for use cases. And NFTs are, are a perfect use case uh, on the blockchain um, Ethereum. And the piece of software that runs in the blockchain is called smart contract. Actually, the word is not good because it's not a contract and it's not smart. It's just the software that automatically um, decides uh, whether, uh, you know, automatic... Um, information like for example the first the easiest smart contract on nfts is i'm gonna i want to sell this jpeg for one eat and if you send me one eat the software sends you the image so it's automatic and when you create a smart contract you create a token a, cr a token that we call non-fungible a non-fungible token nft which is the acronym here i think the acronym will stay but the definition will go away, I hope, because non-fungible token is horrible to say. Why is it non-fungible? Because it's unique. Something fungible is replaceable, like the, my 20 euro bill in my pocket is the same as your 20 euro bill. We can exchange it, no problem. But my artwork is not the same as the artwork you have at home. So my artwork is unique. This is why my token is unique and non-fungible. When they invented that in 2016, 2017, they said, how can we tell the world that we've created something crazy? So these engineers here, uh, called uh, Larva Labs, it's geeks, they've created images. Maybe you've heard of CryptoPunks. And they've created 10,000 images. Actually, they created the algorithm that created these images because it's automatic creation. This is why it's not really art, you know, it's just, it's a creation. It's 10,000 people like that in pixel art. And this is, um, you know, an allusion to uh, pixel art in the 80s. And at the beginning, CryptoPunks were given away because nobody cared, you know. And then two or three years later, like in 2020, 
right uh, during the lockdowns, people started getting interested in CryptoPunks, so they bought it. And um, they bought, you know, you have males, you have females, you have aliens, all these are, sometimes you have characteristics that are very rare. And it was so popular that one day Christie's sold CryptoPunks for $9 million. So something happened there, and people said, why, do you, why would you buy uh, images, little pixel pixelated images, so with so much money, you know? And then I've checked, also Christie sold an artist called Beepo, $69 million. But the press didn't tell you more about that JPEG. They just say, well, a JPEG went for 69 million. This is such a crazy world. What they didn't tell you is that Beeple has been working for 13, 13 years from two, uh, 2007 to, to today. He's created an image every single day for 13 years. That's 5,000 images. And these 5,000 unique images, unique pieces of work, have been uh, aggregated in one JPEG, which is there. And this is what the buyers uh, bought. He bought 13 years of the life of Beeple, aka, AKA Mike Winkleman. So the big phenomenon you've read about is these apes, these monkeys, as the press used to say. So what is happening with that? So they're not called monkeys, they're called Bored Ape Yacht Club. So here they forgot to tell you that it's a club. When you buy a Bored Ape, you enter the club, you enter the community. These apes are like CryptoPunks, they're made in a series of 10,000. You know, you will find more and more 10,000 series in collectibles. They're all different, they all look the same, quite the same, but they're all different. As the punks, they have certain characteristics, very unique, sometimes very rare, which makes the price move and up and down, depending on rarity. The magic of board apes is that for the first time, these people said when you buy a board ape, you buy the image that goes with it. You have full ownership of the image, meaning you can do t-shirts, you can do mugs, you can do movies, you can do restaurants. So this guy there, he bought a board ape and he did a restaurant. And some people are thinking about, you know, some board ape owners are signing with Hollywood studios to make a movie about the board apes. And then when you, whoops, sorry, when you make, when you open your restaurant, you only give access to people who have a board ape, who are part of your community, who are part of the club. So to enter the restaurant, you need to show your iPhone and say, check, you I have the NFT of the board ape. I can come in. It's a very exclusive club. Then the fire went on on that collection. Rolling Stone magazine put the board ape on front, uh, front cover, and then Justin Bieber bought one, Eminem bought one, uh, Madonna now, um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Many artists bo uh, have a board ape now because they want to be part of the club. When you have a board ape, you, you send a signal to the community, a signal of uniqueness, you see here like a symbol of status. This is an advertising for a big watch company. And now the watch is uh, you know, making collabs with board apes. People say that maybe in a few years, uh, if you want to show social status, instead of having a nice Rolex, you should, sh you should show a nice NFT. It will be more important maybe. So I've got my EAT and I've got my NFTs, but where are they? They're hopefully not on my computer, because you know, your computer, your cell, your cell phone can be hacked very easily. Hopefully, all your digital assets will never be on your computer. They will be always and forever on the blockchain. Thank God, it's the blockchain that is secure. The only way you can access your assets is through a key. And this key is your private key. It doesn't look like that in the blockchain world. Your key looks like a wallet. This is my MetaMask wallet. It's on my Chrome uh, browser. So it's just a piece of software. It's a free software that you add on your browser. And then you can see your cryptocurrency. And when you connect it to OpenSea, for example, you see your assets, you see your NFTs. Here are my images. But later on in your wallet, you will have your 
identity papers, you will have uh, your driving license, you will have your diplomas, you will have all your private assets in your privately, securely on your wallet. <coughs> the galaxy of NFT is huge already. In two years, it has been crazy. NFTs are all over art, we've seen it. It's all over um, split assets. When you have expensive assets, you can split them in NFTs. It's all over logistics. You can stick an NFT on, in the parcels that fly over the world, you know? NFTs, of course, in gaming and metaverse. NFTs in utility, like DIO votes. Also NFTs in domain names, like .eth, which is a domain name on Ethereum. It's like the .com. And you have NFTs in social token. In metaverse, which is the next big revolution that's gonna start next year. You know, Facebook changed its name on Meta because of Metaverse. Metaverse, you're gonna experience it today. You need a, like a helmet like this, like an Oculus Quest. And in this, with this, you can meet uh, other people, um, other workers or your colleagues in digital rooms. This is called work rooms, it's from Facebook. And it works very well and you have a lot of recruitment here. So that's gonna be your next, re your next meeting uh, format beginning of this year or next year, you'll meet here, and you will need an avatar. How is gonna be your avatar? Looking exactly like you, or looking like something else, or someone else? And when you have an avatar, if I go back here, you, you may think, well, for this next meeting, I don't want a red shirt. I want a black shirt. So you're gonna buy a digital black shirt, maybe for one euro, but you say, one euro, I don't care, I buy it, because I want to look good in my next meeting. And then your colleague will see your shirt, your black shirt, and say, hey, it's, you have a cool shirt, I want to buy it from you. So he's going to buy your NFT. Your shirt will be an NFT, it will be certified by the NFT. So it's going to look like you, and this is uh, breaking news. Oh, I forgot to put the slide. The breaking news is that Facebook Meta announced yesterday that they're launching a new collection of avatars for workrooms. Uh, avatars made by Balenciaga and other very nice brands. So that's it, it's, it's going now. Don't think it's gonna be in 10 years because the Quest, the helmet is very heavy today, but at the end of the year, Apple Glass will arrive. And Apple Glass is like, you know, my regular spectacles. It will be like this, you will have your correcting lenses on the Apple Glass and then you put it on and you will see digital universe in front of you, in front of your reality. It's called augmented reality. And you will have avatars of people, et cetera, et cetera. So it's coming faster than you imagine. I think the revolution globally will be avatar age. This is like a screen capture from a conference uh, held by Sotheby's. And as you see, people now don't appear with their pictures, maybe two of them. The others appear with profile pictures, which are inspired by their NFT bought uh, as collectibles, you know, CryptoPunks, Bored Ape, et cetera. And on Twitter, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, when you have an avatar, it's on the round circle like this. But when you have an NFT as a profile picture, it's a pentagon like that. And when you click on the pentagon, you see the NFT details here with the smart contract appearing here. And this, is the proof of your ownership of the image. Why do you do that on Twitter? To send a message to the community. You're telling the community that you understand NFTs, that you have the money to buy it, that you're inside the community, and that you interact with the community. When you check the contract number, the NFT number, you go to Etherscan, which is a website, it's just a simple website, and you type in the token address of the NFT, and you see all the history of the NFT. Who bought it first? Who sold it? At what price? When? So you have all the, all the history of the NFT. This is crazy, okay? Maybe difficult for you to read that today, but in a, if just look at it for a few days and then you'll be used to it. Just to show you that the blockchain is transparent. The blockchain is an open book. Anyone can check who bought what, and who owns what. 
Social tokens are a big thing now. It means that with, like I told you, with a board app, you can enter the restaurant. With a social token, you, you can enter big conventions like, you know, Gary Vee, the entrepreneur, very famous. He made a conference last uh, month, like in a stadium. And you could only enter the stadium if you show your NFT on your iPhone. This is what we call social token. So you are part of the community, but you need the NFT to be part of that. Next big thing is tokenization of assets. For diamonds, for example, if you read analysis, you see that half of the people buying diamonds don't buy it for jewelry. They buy it for investment. So companies now say, why don't we tokenize the diamonds so we keep it in the safe box and we issue NFTs or tokens if you want. And then you can buy a fraction of the diamond. Works well with real estate. You have a company called Realty in America, but you can, you can buy it from Europe. So they buy buildings in Chicago, and then they sell you tokens for $50. And for $50, you, are, you own a part of the apartment here. But it's a real apartment with real people living in it, and they pay a real rent. So you have a fraction of the token. You have a, I mean, you have the token, you have a fraction of the apartment, so you get the fraction of the rent. You can tokenize the constitu Constitution of the United States, which is worth 2 million euros. Tokens, token is 25 bucks. Big thing, big thing, big revolution in the NFT is the royalties. In the smart contract, in the NFT, you can decide to gain royalty every time your token, oops, sorry, every time your NFT is sold and resold and re-resold, you get royalty. Like on my NFT, I put 10%. So I sell it to the buyer, then the buyer resell it for a certain price, I get 10%. Then he sell it again, I get 10% over and over and over again. This is good for me, the artist. This is good for companies. Companies can take royalty, give to charity. Uh, creators can also gain money uh, as long as their uh, career goes up, you know. This is a big revolution. You can buy, of course, sneakers. This is uh, a company called uh, Artifact that has been bought by Nike. Nike right away bought this young company creating shoes, digital shoes that you can see in augmented reality with your phone and that you get also in NFT that you can resell, etc. Big stores are in the metaverse now, in digital words. The store is digital and the, and the um, wearables are digital also. Big brands are into gamification. They make deals with, uh, you know, Roblox or uh, Minecraft or whatever. And they make good deals because they want to enter this community. Gaming is a huge industry. Gaming is, is one of the biggest industry. Three billion people are, in, are gamers. So that's why big brands get into that. Carrefour, the supermarket, they bought land. This is how you enter the metaverse. You buy a piece of land, and then you decide to build like a house or supermarket, or you can also make recruitment. That's what Carrefour is doing in the metaverse. They recruit people. The car industry also put NFTs in the car to trace all the pieces of the car. So this is impacting every single industry, little by little. Because the NFT is the only thing that we missed in the digital world, to prove that we are owner of something and to trace the digital objects in the world. One last thing, how you can, the question I have always, how you can enjoy digital art. You can use this. This is, this is when I sell an NFT, I send also a physical piece like that. So you see, digital is not opposed to physical. Digital will complement the physical world. Thank you very much.